So here's the story. My parents wanted some new end tables and after looking online at a local furniture store, they quickly realized how expensive cheap particle board furniture really is. Now my mom showed me the picture of what she thought. I figured I could build something way nicer and out of solid poplar, I could probably build two of them for the price of one. So I did. And the first place we're gonna get started on these tables is the tops. And that's because they're gonna to have to sit in the clamps for a few days, just drying up because we're doing a panel glue up. Now, I'm using a standard off the shelf one by six, no crazy milling procedures here. But because of that, the panel's not perfectly flat. So to keep everything in alignment, especially when I put it in the clamps and put pressure on it, I'm just gonna use a couple dowels per board. With the top set aside, we can turn our attention to the legs. Now these are just two by twos, and one of the legs had a small little imperfection and it had a big check in it, so I just set it with some Starbond CA glue and some accelerator, cause I could be working again in seconds. And then we can take all our legs over to the saw and cut them to the same length. Now I don't have a big fancy miter saw station with stop blocks, so the easiest way to get them all the same size gang cut them, flush them up on the one end, chop them all at the same time. Now I'm putting a little bit of router work on the bottom of the leg, it's optional, it's up to you. And I'm also going to soften all the edges because right now they're about as sharp as a knife. Now we can move on to cutting our skirts out. Now our upper skirts are going to be a 1x8 and our lower stretchers are going to be a 1x2. Now I'm cutting them all about a quarter inch long right now and that's just because I don't have a stop lock. I'm going to gang cut both sides, uppers and lowers at the same time. Same with the front and back uppers and lowers. Now this is going to be much more accurate than trying to line each one up with a pencil mark and cutting them individually. And then for my front face frame, I've already cut my rails to the exact length. I'm just going to measure my styles based off of the rear skirt and cut them to size. And then get comfortable because we need to drill a lot of pocket holes. Now while I'm building the face frame here, you can see on both of my horizontal rails, I've only got one pocket hole in each end to hold them to the legs, and that is honestly gonna be plenty. All right, now I know it looks like I got everything splayed out on the table here ready for assembly, but we're gonna add one more detail with the router. Now I got my bead molding bit here loaded up in the router, and what we're gonna do is on the bottom side of all of our upper skirts, on the outside obviously, we're just gonna add a nice little bead profile. All right, now I got both boards here clamped together, clamped to the table, and this is just to give me a nice big wide profile base for the router to ride on so it doesn't wobble back and forth on me. And then I'm just gonna add my little bead molding bit to the outside, turn the boards around, do the other board, and then flip them out for the other two front and rear skirts. And that little, should have muted my phone. Now it is such a small design, but it is such a big thing that's gonna really add and dress up to the skirts on this table and look fantastic. So let's get at it. By now our top is dry and we can remove it from the clamps and cut it to size. Now I'm just using a square as well as my circular saw to just cut this entire thing out. Now I'm making sure to take just a little bit off of every corner to make sure it's good, straight and square and I've got fresh wood all the way around. And I'm just literally using nothing more than a straight edge, a pencil and a tape measure, making sure to reference and pull lines from every direction.
Uh, okay, finally done sanding. I know it only looks like it's been a few seconds, but trust me, it's been uh, a long time. So now we can finally start thinking about assembly. We're gonna get started on attaching our lower stretchers to the legs. Okay, now this part can be kind of a bit of a dance to do, but let me explain. I've got my leg here and one of my short side stretchers. I've got two blocks that I've cut at an inch and three quarters tall. And this is gonna be the height of all of my stretchers. Now this is gonna be a lot more accurate than trying to line it up with a pencil mark I made on every leg. I've also got a half inch wide block here that I cut. That's gonna be my setback from the outside of the leg itself. And another block here just to sandwich it all between to make sure it's all flush. Now I'm just gonna lightly clamp my spacer blocks to the leg and then push my stretcher towards the spacer blocks and down towards my bottom. Then I'm going to take this pocket hole clamp and just clamp the entire thing together. Now I can remove these. And I know that my stretcher is exactly an inch and three quarters up and half an inch back. And we can rinse and repeat for all of them. So clear as mud. All right. All right, the glue on the bottom shelf has had plenty of time to dry. Now we can start working on all of our upper skirting and we're just gonna install them with pocket hole screws again, as well as using the same shims and clamps that we'd use in the bottom. So it's nice and simple. Our front base frame, however, on the lower inside of each one of the rails, we need to plug this one pocket hole and that's just so when we install our drawer slide runners, we got something to fasten it to because you can't really screw anything to air. So we'll plug these and we'll put on the rest of the skirts. For the drawer slide stretchers, I used the table again to reference for an exact fit. And then I drilled a couple of pocket holes in each end, but you'll notice the front pocket holes are slightly offset. They're towards the top, and that's just so the drawer slide screws don't run into them later on. And then to mount them, I just flushed it up with the top of the bottom rail. And to make sure they're square left to right and front to back, I just used a scrap piece of the one by three from the rail itself, and I shoved it in between the leg and the rail, and that made sure that my offset was exactly the same. Now when it comes to the drawers for these guys, I didn't really need anything super heavy duty. So half inch birch plywood is the name of the game here. That's gonna be plenty. Now, the nice thing is, is all the same methods apply for a pocket hole drawer like this. And I've got a complete dedicated video on my channel already. If you guys want more information, I go into crazy depth about how to size, cut, mount, and install drawers like this. So go ahead and check that out. Now for the drawer fronts, again, just some more solid stock poplar that I cut a quarter inch smaller in both directions to leave me a perfect reveal, and I sanded them smooth, and that's it. 
then the last thing I have to do before finishing is I have to fill in this small little gap between my bottom shelf and my legs. It wasn't perfectly tight and because they're going to be painted I just filled them in with some latex caulk. Now before I threw any color at these I primed them first and then I sanded it back because it was a water based primer it did raise the grain a bit. Now before I get asked the color is iron ore from Sherwin Williams and I sprayed on a couple of coats. Now I wanted the drawer fronts and the tops to match to give it a little bit of visual interest and I absolutely loved it. My mom wanted a bit of a dark walnut color so I went with a dark walnut Danish oil and it was quite a bit different to use but honestly I really really liked it. I flooded the entire thing and kept it wet for 15 minutes, let it sit for another 15 minutes and then wiped it off and let it dry for about 5 days after that and the finish was fantastic. Then I could use my True Position Tools cabinet hardware jig, drill my holes and then start final assembly. Now to mount the drawer slides, I know that my bottom shelf is perfectly flat, so I cut a couple of spacer blocks, set it on there so I didn't have to worry about holding it perfectly level, and I just attached it with that using the drawer front itself as a reference for my setback. And when it comes to mounting the drawer front itself, the easiest way is the old playing card trick. You just shove your drawer front to one side, fill the gap with as many cards as you can, split it in half, and there's your reveal all the way around. Before we get to our glory shots, I just want to jump in here and say thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I've set a lofty goal for 2023 of 100,000 subs. Now I'm going to need you guys help to do this, obviously. So if you guys want to like and subscribe to this video and all the videos, it's going to be a busy year. If you want, share the video around. If there's somebody you know that might enjoy this video, maybe they'll become a sub too. And if you have the means to, zero pressure. But if you have the means to and you want to support the channel and what I do, go ahead and there's a thanks button right below the video. You can make a one-time donation to the channel no reoccurring payments oh and plans there's plans available now too the store is open if you guys want to buy plans to build the projects that i build that would also help support the channel it would be amazing so go ahead and check those out it's in the description down below but we're going to leave this here all year and we're going to be updating it as we go hopefully we knock that thing right out of the park but otherwise enough of that sappy crap see what we built